Where is the, uh, oh my god, I think 51. There is something new student also joining today. Really? Where, where to put the English interpreter? Where is that? No. Let me meet you. Stop recording. No. Oh, why is it not showing? Is it showing on yours? Was there any update or something? No. No. Is it on yours? Is it on yours? It is on my part. It is on mine. Yeah, I saw it yesterday. Last time it was on yours. Right, it was there, yeah. What happened? Can, uh, can I try again, Maharaj, to log, log out and then log in again? You want me to leave? Yeah, you can leave and then let me try again to see if there was... Okay. Anything. And then log in again? Yeah, I, I, will, I will try to log in. Let me make so the house of Buddha goes. Can I log in now? Can you exit from Zoom first? Exit, yes, exit Zoom. Command Q. Hmm. Hmm. Now start again. Hmm. Command space. Hmm. Command what? Command space. Command space. I type Zoom. Yes, start it. Now say join it again. You can select from here. This one. One zero zero eight zero two. I'm not able to make an interpreter if you make me a co-host. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to make you host, Prabhu. Okay. Then please, then please meet, the meet the co-host. Yeah, yeah, sure. <coughs> K. 
Can I begin? Maharaj, I have to ask Sul Sulama Prabhu. Uh, Maharaj, uh, language interpretation option is not showing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm starting right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sulama Prabhu is going to start. Thank you, Prabhuji. I'll, I'll give back. Okay. Okay. I'll click the English. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pricharine Nirvisesha Shanyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanhebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're continuing our study of the nectar of instruction and we're studying text number five we're hearing about the different levels of Vaishnavas, namely Kanista, Madhyama and Uttama. And in the previous class, we were discussing about the vision of the different devotees, particularly how a Kanista devotee, his vision will be simply, who remembers what is the vision of the Kanista devotee, Radha Kishori Maharaji? The devotee sees the deity in the temple as Krishna, and he sees Krishna in other uh, other devotees. Uh, so he just um, respects Krishna in the temple. But he he's not uh, he doesn't know how to deal with devotees. Yes, right. Thank you. Right. He simply says his vision is limited to the deity in the temple. So he he has all his reverence and respect. He's a devotee. The Kanista devotee is a devotee. He's initiated. He's chanting the holy name, but he has very little knowledge of the Krishna conscious philosophy. So his understanding is limited to simply seeing the deity. However, there are Majjama devotees, more advanced devotees, and they have a different vision, right? They've described here expanded vision. All right, who would like to tell me what is the vision of the Majjama devotee? All right, can I try? Yes, please. The Madhya Madhikari is a devotee who worships the Supreme Personality of Godhead first, as the highest object of He makes friends with the Lord's devotees. He what? He's merciful. He makes friends okay. with the Lord's devotees. Yeah. He's merciful to the ignorant and he avoids the envious by nature. Yeah, we don't describe him so much as ignorant, but he's merciful to the innocent. The, okay, well, right. the innocent, those who are genuinely uh, inquisitive and willing to hear, then he gives mercy to them. But, okay, well, right. but those who are atheistic and who are blasphemers, and he avoids them. He avoids them. Right. Thank you. Right. So this is a madhya. So how is it described in the verse? How does Rupa Goswami describe how should we deal with somebody who chants, simply chants the holy name? How is it described? We will ask Gita Induleka. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Tanu Tham. 
It's mentioned in the verse. First line, Krishna ti yasya girita man saadri eta. One should mentally uh, respect a Krishna devotee. Mm -hmm. He should offer respect in mind. Yeah, mentally honor the devotee who chants yes. the holy name, right? He's taken the, what we would call the first initiation, the Harinam initiation. He's chanting the holy name. And so we respect him in the mind. But then somebody else who's more, a little more advanced, they've taken probably, they must have taken second initiation and they're engaged in worshipping the deity. So how should we respect them? How should we deal with them? We should offer obeisances to him. Offer right. We should offer obeisances to those who are initiated and uh, those who are engaged in the service of the deities uh, of the Supreme Lord. Right. And there's but and then there's somebody who's uh, more advanced, Uttama Adhikari. Yes, the third part of the shlok. Uh, then we uh, should serve him and honor, serve him and honor him and follow in the footsteps of a uttam adhikari of a pure devotee. All right. Okay. So we're hearing the vision here. The, the Madhya Madhi, he, he makes distinction. I explained in the last class how the Madhya Madhi devotee will make distinction. But on the highest level, the most expensive vision, uttama adhikari, who can, who will we ask, who would like to tell us about that? Who have we got? Huh? Have we got some devotee like to tell us about the vision of the Uttama Adhikari? Yeah, who? Ananta Pandit. Ananta? Ananta Pandit. Ananta Pandit. Yeah. It's going to tell us the vision of the Uttama Adhikari. Ya Uttama Adhikari, ciri-cirinya adalah selalu berpikir. Symptom of Uttama Adhikari, always think about Krishna, and always think about how way to preach the message of Krishna, and understand that the only business of him in this world is to preach Krishna consciousness all over the world. Okay, so what are some, what are some of the, how does he actually see everyone, the Uttama Adhikari? You're talking about his activity, his business to preach. Yeah. But what is his vision? So he sees every living entity is yes. Jivera Sarupahoy Krishna Nitya Das. So the Uttama Dikandri only sees Krishna and, uh, and he sees Krishna in every heart of every living entity. In every heart of living entity. In the hearts, okay. He sees it. So he sees everyone already engaged in some kind of service to Krishna. Yes. Right. Has everyone seen my uh, PowerPoint? Did I share? Yes, PowerPoint is there. Is there? Okay, good. Although it's not in slideshow mode. Right, I'm, I'm just going to put it in slideshow now. Yeah. If I can. How does this thing go up? It's, yeah. Oh, just click here. Not there, above yes. Oh. And then play from current slide. Mm. Okay, so here's the verse describing the Uttama Adhikari. A person advanced in devotional service sees everything. It sees within everything the soul of souls, Krishna. Consequently, he always sees the form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead as the cause of all causes and understands that all things are situated in him. This 11th canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, 2nd chapter, verse 45, describing about the Uttama Adhikari. A qualification for seeing Krishna everywhere, we mentioned before, what's the qualification? Love of Krishna, right? When the eyes are full of love, then we will see Krishna everywhere, in the heart. Hmm. Prabhupada quotes, 
premanjana charita bhakti vilo janena. Right? The pure devotee sees Krishna in their heart of hearts with the eye of devotion, tinged with the salve of love. So that is pure love. So three levels of Vaishnavas. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed the people in Kuliyagram, three levels of devotees describing how they chant the holy name. One is chanting Hare Krishna mantra. Anybody who's chanting understood to be a Vaishnava. Therefore, as Gita in the Lake Amadaji said, should offer all respects to him. Because it's, even if we chant only one time, okay, well, it's chanted, we offer our respects to him. But a person who is always chanting the holy name of the Lord is considered first class Vaishnava. Our duty is to serve his lotus feet. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati says, any Vaishnava constantly chanting the holy name should be considered to have attained the second platform, meaning Madhyam Adhikari. Such a devotee is superior to a neophyte who has just learned to chant the holy name. A neophyte devotee simply tries to chant, but the, uh, the, the Madhyama devotee, the advanced devotee, is accustomed to chanting and takes pleasure in it. This is a sign that he's actually not Kanista, he's taking pleasure in the chanting of the holy name. An intermediate devotee, Madhyam, is greatly attached to chanting the holy name. By chanting he's elevated to the platform of love. If one chants the holy name of the Lord with great attachment, he can understand his position as an eternal servant of his spiritual master, other Vaishnavas and Krishna himself. Thus the intermediate Vaishnava considers himself Krishna Das, Krishna's servant. All right. And this is quoting from Jaiva Dharma, Srila Bhaktivinoda's book, to the topic of second cat, the friendly attitude of the Madhyama Vaishnava he adopts towards the fellow surrendered devotees of the Lord, those who are blessed by Shuddha Bhakti. So we said this is one of the characteristics of the Madhyama devotee, that they like to make, they will be very friendly in their dealings with the devotees. Kanista, however, is not on the platform of Shuddha Bhakti, he's not doing that pure devotion. He does not serve and satisfy the pure devotees. Therefore, Maitri, being friend, can only be properly seen in the Madhyama Adhikari, to his fellow Madhyama Adhikari devotees and, the highest level, and to the highest level Uttama. Right? So this quality of being friendly with the devotees, we won't see it in the, in the uh, neophyte in, in the Kanista devotee. Intermediate devotee preaches Krishna consciousness to innocent neophytes, stresses the importance of chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. An um, intermediate devotee can identify the non-devotee or motivated devotee. Motivated devotee or non-devotee are on the material platform. They are called Prakrita. Hmm. The intermediate devotee does not mix with such materialistic people. And so even though they're devotees, they're, they're materially motivated. And so the, the Madhyama devotee who is a preacher, he's careful, he doesn't get any benefit from associating with such people. The neophyte and an intermediate devotee However, both them should always be eager to hear Mahabhagwat and serve him in every respect. The neophyte and intermediate devotees can gradually rise to the platform of Uttama Adhikari and become first class devotees. How do you think they're going to come to the first class platform? How, what do they have to do to become Uttama Adhikari? Who can say? Who would like to answer? Show your hand. 
for the Kanista and the Madhyam to become first class devotees, what do they need to do? Do we have any hands? Okay, Dakshina Rani Madhaji is going to answer on behalf of all the 50 plus students who are listening. Uh, how to proper uh, take service to other devotees. Thank you. How, how do we associate with these pure devotees? Uh, uh, help, help them to serve Krishna. Help them to serve uh, what should, uh, we can help them like that. We should serve them, right? We yeah, should give service them. to them. And we should yeah. hear. We should hear from them. Yeah. What's the difference between them and us? What qualification have they got that we don't have? Uh, if we, uh, we avoid a uh, good association uh, from pure devotee and engage with uh, the other uh, less pro from them, so we take uh, the, the consciousness and if we take the bad consciousness, uh, slowly, slowly, we no, you haven't got it right. You haven't got the point. What's the diff what makes the difference between the Kanista and the Madhyam and the Uttama? What's the difference? So the, 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 the difference is Kanista uh, Adhikari cannot uh, separate how to uh, interact with devotee and other people, common people, but Madhyama Adhikari, uh, he or she can, uh, can do properly uh, how to react with uh, uh, devotee. Yeah, but why? People, but why? What makes a difference? Why? Oh, because. Uh, Madhyama Adhikari get a, have good knowledge. Right. That's one yeah. point. He's got knowledge, right? He's got yeah. more knowledge than the, than the Kanista. And what yeah. about the Uttama? Uh, Uttama Adhikari, uh, the knowledge is very good, and uh, and what else is good? What else is good? What else is good beside the knowledge? Uh, beside the knowledge is uh, engagement. Uh, the sense is, in, is uh, full of engagement for Krishna service. No, we mentioned two qualities. Two qualities. One, one was knowledge, and the other was, huh? Knowledge and knowledge and act properly. Faith. 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 Oh, Faith. Yeah. Yes. Kista, Kanista has very weak knowledge and weak faith. The Madhyama, he's got strong faith, but he's got not very, he's got some knowledge, but not much. It's not, he cannot convince people. But the Uttama, he's got strong faith and he's very good in convincing. He can defeat other people and convince them, right? So that is a difference between the, the Madhyam and the Kanista and the Uttama. Uttama is a first class devotee because he's got full faith and full knowledge. His arguments are very convincing. Right? Okay. Thank you. All right. From the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, a first-class Vaishnava is he whose very presence makes others chant the holy name of Krishna. Right? Just by seeing that prayer, you want to chant the holy name of Krishna, right? From the purport, with great love and affection, the Mahabhagavat observes the Supreme Personality of Godhead, devotional service, and the devotee. He observes nothing beyond Krishna. Krishna consciousness 
and Krishna's devotees. Mahabhagavat devotee knows everyone is engaged in the Lord's service in different ways. He therefore de descends to the middle platform to elevate everyone to the Krishna conscious platform. So Prabhupada is describing how the Mahabhagavat, the person on the topmost platform, the Uttama Adhikari, he sees everyone engaged in Krishna service in different ways. And so he thinks they're already serving Krishna. So he, he wouldn't preach. So he has to come down to the middle platform. He has to become the Madhyama devotee. And then he thinks how to elevate everyone to Krishna conscious position. So this is what happens. Someone like Srila Prabhupada, he's a Mahabhagavat, Uttama Adhikari, but he comes down to the Madhyama platform to go out to preach, to distribute Krishna consciousness. Right? And Srila Jiva Goswami describes, a Mahabhagavat sees every living entity as a pure soul. Such a Mahabhagavat still experiences special ecstasy and other symptoms upon meeting another Vaishnava. This is a symptom of his love for Krishna. Such a Mahabhagavat feels special ecstasy, special ecstatic love upon seeing another living entity directly pleasing the senses of the Supreme. So, Jiva Goswami is pointing out, someone may be on the topmost platform, but it doesn't mean he will treat everyone exactly the same. Although he sees everyone serving Krishna in different ways, he knows there are certain devotees who are directly pleasing the senses of Krishna. And they will take special pleasure in meeting with a devotee like that. They see other people, you know, somebody's a karmi, he's also serving Krishna in another way. And so he sees they're serving Krishna, but he's not going to feel any ecstasy in seeing them. And so this is from Srimad Bhagavatam, again. It's all in 11th Canto, 2nd chapter, described there. Now, again, coming back to Chaitanya Charitamrita, where these different levels of devotees are also discussed. Mahabhagavat can turn a living entity from abominable material life to the Lord's service. This is the test of a Mahabhagavat. Although preaching is not meant for a Mahabhagavat, a Mahabhagavat can descend to the platform of Madhyama Bhagavat just to convert others to Vaishnavism. Right? Somebody who is Uttama, he's not, he doesn't need to preach because he sees everybody already serving Krishna. So they just do their bhajan, they just do their chanting, they just stay in the holy dham. But when they come down, when they feel, when they descend to the Madhyama platform, then they want to make others devotees, to convert people to Krishna consciousness. And then Prabhupada writes, actually a Mahabhagavat is fit to spread Krishna consciousness, but he does not distinguish where Krishna consciousness should be spread from where it should not. He thinks everyone is competent to accept Krishna consciousness if the chance is provided. <laughs> so this is a Mahabhagavat on the topmost platform. They, th they think everyone... Can, everyone can take Krishna consciousness. So they can go anywhere. They will see Krishna consciousness can be introduced everywhere. It's nothing separate from Krishna. So just to summarize these points, how to associate properly. This Remember this verse, text number 5, is about how to associate because we heard about the different loving exchanges in number 4. So number five is telling us how to apply the loving exchanges. All right, Rup Rupa Goswami has given guidelines in text number five for the Madhyama Vaishnava. As we heard, 
Gita Indulekha Maharajji say, one should mentally honour the devotee. Who is that? Who should mentally honour? The Madhyama Vaishnava. He should mentally honour the devotee who chants the holy name. He should offer obeisances to a devotee who has taken initiation and is engaged in worshipping the deity. And he should associate with and faithfully serve the one who is advanced and fixed in devotional service and does not criticize anyone. So Rupa Goswami writes, a Madhyama should mentally honor Manasat Sat Krishna Nam Charitari Sitap right, this one. Mentally honor a devotee who chants the holy name, Krishnati Yashagiri Tam Manasadriyeta. Right? This is the verse. Mentally honor. The first, and then offer humble obeisances. Dikshati pratanati bischa pajantamisham. Offer humble obeisances. Pranati bish to the devotee who has undergone spiritual initiation, diksha, and is engaged in worshipping the deity, bhajantam isham, and associate with apsiti sangalabhya and faithfully serve sushrushaya, that pure devotee who is advanced in undeviated devotional service, bhajanya vigyanam anya, and whose heart it's completely devoid of the propensity to criticize others. Ananya nindati shunya ridam, right? Criticizing others. That offense comes about due to idle talk, prajalpa. We start to criticize. And so the, the advanced devotee, he doesn't waste his time in idle talk. So he won't blaspheme, he won't criticize others. Why? Because he's so busy chanting the holy name and reading scriptures, trying to preach Krishna consciousness, thinking how to spread the Krishna consciousness movement and how to get people to chant the holy name, how to give the holy name to others. So he's absorbed in these ways. So Rupa Goswami describes how the Madhyama should associate but in Srimad Bhagavatam, it seems a little different, but it's pretty, pretty much the same. Srimad Bhagavatam, 11th canto, describes the Madhyama devotee should worship Krishna as the highest object of love. Ishwari, right? We said offer the love to the deity or to Krishna in his different forms, his different incarnations. Make friends with the Lord's devotees. Have friendly dealings with the devotee. Be merciful to the in, oh, to the ignorant. <laughs> they put ignorant here. Yeah, I, I prefer it to be innocent. <laughs> and avoid those who are envious by nature. Okay. So this this uh, this is the vision of the Madhyama Adhikari from Srimad Bhagavatam. Right. We're going to come back. To speak later, we'll come back and speak more about initiation and about who to take initiation from, what kind of person we should be taking initiation from, because it's mentioned here, particularly it's mentioned how one should take initiation from someone who is an Uttama Adhikari, like that. So we want to discuss that, but not immediately. We're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about the appropriate attitude towards devotees' external features, right? This is going into text number six. So we're taking the two texts, text number five and text number six, we're taking them both together in this one presentation here. So text number six speaks about the external features of a devotee that uh, the example is given that one, one should bathe in the Ganges water without considering the bubbles, foam and mud. In the same way, the body of the devotee may appear to be impure. It's mentioned here, one should overlook a devotee's having a body born in a low family, 
a body with a bad complexion, a deformed body, or a diseased or infirm body. Who is a devotee? Right? Can, can you think of some people who are examples like this? Devotees having bodies like, do you know in, the, in, in our line of acharyas, great acharyas, do we have some examples of devotees like that? Who had some particular material disqualification which would appear to be an obstacle to them? Yes, I don't have any. Okay, let's hear from them. Oh. Just one word, please. Premadan. Premadan. Yes, Maharaj Hare Krishna, Dandavat Pranam. Dandavat Pranam. So, like uh, Vasudeva, who has uh, le leprosy, Maharaj? Okay, he had leprosy, he had worms eating his body. But he yes. was, he, but he was born in a Brahmana family. He was a Brahmana, okay. right? He wasn't by birth. He, you know, maybe he had a disease. He had, a, you know, certainly diseased body. But he had a yes. good birth. You know, Brahmana birth. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah. Someone else? Anandini Radhika. Sri Haridas Thakur. Yes. Why? He born in a Malachya family? Yeah, he's born in a Malachya family. Right. He was born in a Malachya family. He could not go into the, the Puri temple. He could not see the Lord Jagannath. But Lord Chaitanya made him the Acharya of the Holy Name. Yes. Hmm. Thank you. Someone else? Manishi Prabhu. Manishi Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj Dandavat Pranam. So, uh, the other's uh, personality like uh, Rupa Saratan, Salabega. Well, he was born in a Muslim family. Who? Uh, Salabega, Rupa Saratan as well. Oh, Salabega, okay. He was born in a Muslim family. He's not very well known. Yes, but Rupa and Sanatan, you said Rupa and Sanatan? What was their disqualification? Manisi? Yes. What was, was born in a... What was the disqualification of Rupa and Sanatan? I, I, I think he, he, he is a born in a Muslim family, Marat. Rupa and Sanatan were not born in Muslim families. They were born in Brahmana family. Okay, Maharaj. What did they do? Why did they? Why could they not go into the temple? Someone. So I think. Be, I think because he he was uh, working. Uh, Muslim kingdom, Maharaj. Yeah, because they, they became employees, they became engaged in the service of the Mohammedan ruler, the Nawab Hussein Shah, and he gave them both Muslim names, right? They became Dabir Qas and Shakara Malik. And so they got these Muslim names and they were, they were practically Muslims. They were living, associating with the Muslims regularly. And, you know, that because the Muslims had engaged, the, the Nawab had engaged them in his service to rule the kingdom. He saw they were very expert, very good qualities. So he made one of them the Prime Minister and the other one the Chancellor of the Exchequer. So he gave them big positions in his government and honoured them with the Muslim names. So when they became, when they became devotees, they came to Lord Chaitanya they, you know, although they were, had a good birth and born in a Brahmana family, they'd lost their caste by taking service in the Mohammedan government. Yes? Okay? Yes? So, but we're following, we're reading Rupa Goswami's book and we're saying we're Rupa Nugas, we're following Rupa Goswami. Uh-huh. 
Yes, anybody else? Gita into Lake Maharaji. He was born in a Dominic family and the son of Hirana Kashyapu, who was always against the Lord and Bali Maharaj also. What kind? Was, what kind of family they were born in? He, Bali Maharaj was also. Uh, he was also in Pralad Maharaj family. He was also born in Dominic family. What but both of them uh, were both of them surrendered to God. What kind of family were they born in? In the family of Dominic, Demons, uh, Hina Kashapu, they uh, were under the uh, sons of uh, uh, Palana, the son of Hina Kashapu. Okay. And uh, his grand, uh, Palad Maharaj's grandson is uh, uh, Bali Maharaj. So both are in the under in in Dominic family, but uh, both of them are great devotees. And uh, one is uh, Bali Maharaj is uh, we, we say for uh, Acharya of Atni Vedanam, and uh, Pralad Maharaj is from Smaranam. All right. So they were born in the demonic family, the yeah, Asura, Asuric birth. Their family is, they came in the family of the Asuras, but they were great devotees. Okay. Anybody else, sir? Oh, oh, really? Krishna. Yes. Ananta Vijay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Prana. Yes, there are some uh, example devotee of uh, Lord Krishna or Vishnu, uh, like uh, uh, this uh, elephant. Uh, Gajendra. Yes, Gajendra. Gajendra. Gajendra Maharaj. Okay. And then also Hanuman. Hanuman is uh, born like uh, like monkey. Yes, okay, Sunday. good. Very good, yeah. Animals also. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Huh? Jyoti Radha. Jyoti Radha. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Maharaj Vasudev Devra, he was the great devotee of Lord Chaitanya. He had a bus all over his body, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu hugged him and gave him beauty, his body after that. Well, we had that example already. That was the first example. Yeah. Oh. Uh huh. Dina Vatsala. Hare Krishna, Yanda Vat Prana Marat. Contohnya seperti Narada Muni. The example is like Narada Muni. Her mother is the servant of the Brahmana. Narada Muni. Narada Muni. His mother is the uh, servant yeah, but, of the But Narada Muni is the son of Brahma. The, that was the previous life when he was the maid servant's son. Narada Muni is the son of Brahma. Yeah. So we couldn't really consider Narada Muni to have a low birth. Hmm. Yes, yeah, somebody else? Just like Haridas Thakur, just before, he was Brahma himself. So that's why I consider Narad Muni as the lower. Well, Haridas Thakur, he was born in Mohammedan family. We're, to, we're not looking at his previous birth. We're talking about Narad Muni's this birth. Yeah, previous life we're all so many things. We don't know where we're coming from. <laughs> but anyway. Huh? Oh. Okay, Archana Radha Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj Pranam. Uh -huh. uh, Maharaj uh, Vamsi Das Babaji Maharaj, he was born in a fisherman's family. Oh, okay. And Janava Mataji and Ganga Mata, they were women. Okay. 
Okay, two, uh, two ladies. Yes, brother. Yes. Janava yes, Mataji, Ganga, Mata, Ganga, Ganga Mata Goswamini, women's body. No. Okay, so many examples are there, right? Thank you very much for all your participation. Yeah, many examples, devotees having a body born in a low family, bad complexion, deformed body, diseased, infirm body. Hmm. Sometimes our bodies are very ugly, you know, but is it, it's not really, that's not the pro, that's not a barrier to our Krishna consciousness. There's a, there's a pastime, there was this one devotee, Astavakra Muni, he had a very twisted, deformed body, and he came to the spiritual assembly. There was to be an association of all the devotees. And when he appeared, some people were laughing at him. And so he simply said to them, he said, Oh, I, I thought maybe I've come to the wrong place. I thought I was coming to a spiritual assembly. You know, on the spiritual platform, we don't look at the external symptoms. We don't look at the material body. We don't consider the these the circumstances. That's not how we judge a person's spiritual advancement. And we often tell people, you don't judge a person's advancement just because he's, he wears saffron cloth or just because he has a shaved head. He may, he, may, he may wear the dress of a devotee. That doesn't make him a devotee. We have to see the proper behavior, the in, internal characteristics of the devotee. So the principal characteristic of a devotee, we put here on the slide, surrender to Krishna and his name. That is the important characteristic for a devotee. We want to see that quality, that somebody is really surrendered to Krishna and he's really taken shelter of the holy name. All the secondary characteristics, they were described by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he met with Sanatana Goswami. So Sanatana Goswami, he, he you know, he, he was coming uh, from this, his Muslim background. And another time he came to meet Lord Chaitanya in Jagannath Puri, Sanatana came after traveling through the forest and he drank some impure water and his body had become very diseased and he had many sores all over his body which were producing a lot of, you know, of, of fluid oozing from his sores. But Lord Chaitanya came, when Lord Chaitanya saw him, Lord Chaitanya embraced him. And Sanatana Goswami felt so bad about it, he thought, oh no, Lord Chaitanya is touching my diseased body. But Lord Chaitanya didn't feel any problem. Lord Chaitanya told Sanatana, no, I said, I said that's, that's only external. Lord Chaitanya gave the example, just like a baby may pass stool and pass, you know, the waste products coming from the body of the child, but it's not a problem for the mother to clean the child because the mother has love of the child. In the same way, Lord, Lord Krishna loves his devotees and he doesn't consider their physical condition. All right, so. Srila Bhaktivinoda states, if one has the principal qualification of surrender to Krishna, but doesn't have all the secondary qualifications to the full extent, he is still a devotee. As one continues chanting, the secondary qualifications eventually fully manifest. A Vaishnava may be criticized on four counts, right? How do people criticize Vaishnavas? Who remembers? What kind of apparat, what kind of offenses? How do we offend people? Anybody know? Any hands up? Yeah? Anantapadnit Prabhu? How do we criticize people? Ananta Pandit, are you able to answer? Yes. On what basis do we criticize people? How do we offend them? Yeah, 
menyalahkan jasa rasa ini. Based on MD. Yeah, MD of what? Why do we MD? His wealth, his uh, good looking, his appearance, his knowledge. So. You're envious of that. <laughs> you, but you can't criticize someone just just because they have wealth or good looks. And women, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think that's quite the idea. Uh, if if we. Can, Another person, another can explain, right? Yes. Right. It mentioned here. Oh we, yeah. We we give four four reasons usually why we criticize people. One may be basis of their birth, that by birth they're low caste. We may say, oh, this person very low caste. He's not a Brahmin. He's not twice born. He's a Malecha, he's a Yavana, he's a Sudra, like that. So we criticize someone on the basis of birth, this is not proper. We may criticize them on the basis of some sins or faults which they did before they became devotees. That's also not proper that maybe in the past somebody did something very bad, you know, maybe they, they, maybe they stole, like Magrari, he was a hunter, he was killing animals. So can we criticize him that, oh, he was a hunter? But no, he took up the chanting of the holy name, he became a great devotee. We cannot criticize him on the basis of his past. And Someone may do something unpremeditated, accidentally. He does something sinful, you know, just one time. But it, it was an accident. He didn't, you know, it was a little careless, you could say. So we shouldn't criticize someone for that. And someone may even have traces from their past of their sinful activity. So these kind of reasons, we said, this is not proper to criticize people. We say this is, they are insubstantial grounds for criticism of a Vaishnava. Even these conditions may be there in the devotee, they are not substantial, it's not, it's insubstantial, it's not enough for, to, to criticize one. We shouldn't criticize someone for that. If we criticize him, then we are involved in sadhu ninda. Sadhu ninda means bl <coughs> blasphemy of a devotee. And by blasphemy, blasphemy of a devotee, we make Krishna angry. So we want to be very careful how we speak about devotees. A nice example is given here. Raghunath Das Goswami. Now Raghunath Das Goswami also was not born in a Brahmana family. And he was born in a very, very wealthy family, very, very wealthy family, so wealthy that his father and his uncle, they were maintaining all of the brahmanas in Bengal. But Raghunath Das, and, and they had Raghunath Das married to a very beautiful young woman, but he, he didn't want it. He didn't want the beautiful woman and he didn't want the money, and he left it all behind to come to Lord Chaitanya. And so Raghunath Das, although he was not from a Brahmana family, he was a very great devotee. And he gives an example of how one mistakes something bad for something good by using the example of someone who is bathing in ash urine and thinking he is cleansing himself. You know, ash urine is not like cow urine. Even we wouldn't bathe in cow urine. I've never heard of people bathing in cow urine. But ash urine, that's the worst. So, just like we said about the Ganga, the, Gan the Ganges may look 
Oh, it's, we may think, oh, the Ganges got so much foam and bubbles and mud. Oh, I'm not, it's not clean. I'm not going to take bath there. But a person in knowledge knows this is the Ganges water. And this is coming from the feet of Vishnu. And it's very powerful to take bath in the water of the... So like that, we're thinking it's, it's bad, but it's actually good. And sometimes people think something which is... They're thinking something to be good, actually it's bad. So Raghunath gives the example, he said, people think ash urine is good and they take bath in it. They're so stupid. So he's talking about how sometimes devotees discuss the faults of a Vaishnava and we are thinking that actually this is a very good discussion and very purifying to analyze these faults for the sake of clarifying issues to push on the movement. They're committing offenses by talking about devotees, but they're thinking, oh no, this is very good, we're, we're, we're going to purify ourselves, we're going to push on the movement. No, it's not true. It's not good to talk about the faults. So sometimes it's hard to distinguish the creeper from the weeds, right? The guru has put the seed of devotion in the heart. We have to water it. So, when you water the seed, you also water weeds. Weeds also grow up. And we have to distinguish between the actual seed of devotion and the weeds. So there are weeds of duplicitous behavior or fault-finding. In Sanskrit it's called kutinati, finding faults with others. So Raghunath Das Goswami compares fault-finding to bathing in ash urine. Duplici duplicitous behavior means we make a show of devotional service, but our purpose is not pleasing Krishna, but to get some honor or praise of people. People, we think people will respect us or think we're very advanced. We find fault with others to make our position more by finding fault with others. So this is not good behavior of a devotee. We have to learn how to associate properly. So Prabhupada writes, text number six, the purport of Nectar of Instruction, that one is forbidden to observe the activities of a pure, of a pure Vaishnava from a material point of view. For the neophyte, especially, considering a pure devotee from a material point of view is very injurious. One should therefore avoid observing a pure devotee externally but should try to see the internal feature and understand how he is engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. In this way one can avoid seeing <coughs> the pure devotee from a material point of view and thus one can gradually become a purified devotee himself. So Śrīla Prabhupāda is guiding us here on this very important instruction of the Upadesha Amrita that we should not judge people simply on the basis of their external features. You know, we may think, oh, that person, he doesn't look like a good devotee. And we saw how uh, Gadarhar came to meet Pundarik Vijanidi. When Gadarhar first came, he had heard from Makunda, great devotees coming. And so Gadarhar came to see Pundarik Vijanidi. And when he saw Pundarik Vijanidi, he thought, oh, he's a materialist. Because Pundarik Vijanidi was quite wealthy. And so he was well dressed in good cloth. And he had people fanning him. And then he was chewing pan. And he had so many nice things in front of him and he had many rings on his finger and ornaments. And, and Gadarhar, he's a very austere, renounced brahmachari. 
So he came and saw Pundarik Vijanidhi and he thought, oh, he's just some materialist. Oh, look, he looks like a materialist, look, looks like a Vishayi, a sense enjoyer. But then when Makunda sang a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, Oh, Bakiyam Stanakala Kutam, like that, he was singing about how Krishna is so merciful that he took Putana for his mother even though she came with poison on her breast to kill him. So when Makunda sang the verse, then Pundarik Vijanidhi fell over his seat, he fell on the ground and he rolled on the floor in ecstasy for hours. And he shed tears and he flooded the floor and Gadarhar understood, oh, this Pundarik Vijanidhi is really a great devotee. And he understood he'd made an offense. And so later on Gadarhar he decided the proper way to atone for his offence was to surrender himself to Pundarik Vijanidhi and to take initiation from him. So Gadarhar became the, 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 the he took initiation from Gadarhar Pandit. Uh, Gadarhar Pandit took initiation from Pundarik Vijanidhi with the blessings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So very important, don't just look at the external symptoms. We have to be careful to see properly. So what, why is an appropriate attitude towards devotees, external features important within ISKCON? Can we get some feedback from the devotees here? We'd like to hear from the Balinese devotees as well. You know, you have your translator here. We will take the Balinese devotees to reply from the, to this question first. We'll give them a chance to reply. Does everyone understand the question? Can we hear from the Indonesian devotees? Are you ready? No hands. No hands. Sudama, is it Sudama? Who is the translator? Girid Hari Prabhu. Girid Hari Prabhu, have you got some have you got some devotees there yes. to give us an answer? Yes, Maharaj. There are two actually. Maybe Maharaj can choose. Oh we'll hear we'll hear both of them. I want, want to hear both of them. What's the name, Maharaj? Who's speaking? It's Parvati Mataji, Maharaj. Okay. Bhagavati Mataji. Bhagavati Mataji. Okay, plan, plan. Yes, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. The attitude towards the devotee external feature is very important because it is etiquette about the attitude towards uh, the uh, devotee's external devotee external features because uh, the etiquette is the bhushana of a Vaishnava. It is important because it is part of the etiquette of a Vaishnava, and especially appropriate attitude towards the devotees, external features. That is what she is saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, what does, what does the other person, other devotees say? Yes, Prabhuji, has raised the hand. Hare Krishna, Dara. 
महाराज हरे कृष्ण महाराज हरे कृष्ण धन्यवाद एटिकेट then we're speaking about vaishnava etiquette a vaishnava etiquette is very distinct and and not everybody is aware of vaishnava etiquette and there's other few other devotees somebody dakshinarani mataji dakshinarani mataji we'll hear from dakshinarani mataji hari krishna maharaj इंटरनेशनल सोसायटी फॉर कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस इट मीन it's internationally then people who come into krishna consciousness who become devotee come from very very different background and most of us are born in the mlecha in the maybe ex- just externally we are not qualified to be devotee so we have to see the we should not see the what is their background we just have to see uh, their uh, qualification in krishna consciousness we, we have to overlook their background before they come to krishna consciousness but we have to see their uh, properly their advancement in krishna consciousness marat yes i think that's very good answer yes hey krishna thank you very much thank you mahar mhm your message is brought up an important point that we're an international society and as such you know we get people coming from all different backgrounds we don't have any uh particular distinction about who's qualified and who's not qualified but any person who is genuinely interested and willing to follow the principles then they be- they can become a member of the society take part in the activities all right any other points Ananta Vijay Prabhu Yes sir Maharaj uh we need uh, to apply this uh, appropriate uh, attitude toward uh, ex- in external uh, is uh, actually for the sake of the of preaching Maharaj uh, when we come for preaching we have to have a nice attitude like that well well you know somebody may say oh you people you preach to all the all the low class people i don't want to join you <laughs> someone may say like that they may say you know you hari krishna you take anybody there you let everybody join 
<laughs> I don't know if I want to join Hare Krishna. You've got all these people, all these weird people, strange people. I don't know if I want to join. <laughs> Not, okay, Prabhu, thank you anyway. Yeah, anybody else? Yes, Maharaj. Dina Vatsal. Dina Vatsal? Yes, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Yes, Hare Krishna. Because, yes, because we are international society. Because we are international society. So, we have to have the appropriate attitude. All the devotees with their different backgrounds, it uh, equally, and we are have to realize they are lucky soul because they can chant holy name inside this association in this society of his God. so they are special soul that they can join this movement and they can chant holy name inside the movement so we should see them like that okay very good that's what essence was thank you Varad. yes very nice thank you Okay, so we'll go ahead. I think we got some good answers there. Yeah, we're an international society. We want to give everyone an opportunity. Now we're going to speak about another important point, which we should understand here, about how, to, how we should respect and how we should behave in the presence of empowered devotees, like, you know, great personalities like Srila Prabhupada, you know, sometimes, you know, people didn't always understand and appreciate his position and why we gave Prabhupada so much respect. But Prabhupada writes here, an empowered person who is actually engaged in the confidential service of the Lord should not be treated as an ordinary human being. Right? That if we treat him like an ordinary person, then this is not good. And Prabhupada also writes, one should not be jealous of an empowered Vaishnavas or try to bring him down to, to, or try to bring him down to his platform, right? The jealous person wants to bring the empowered devotee down to his platform. So sometimes among God brothers, we thought some of Prabhupada's God brothers, they, were, they didn't like it, you know. They didn't like that Prabhupada took the name Prabhupada. They thought this name is for our Guru Maharaj. You know, but why it has to be only one person can have the name? And so there were some problems, different. Dif, dif, Prabhupada also made some changes and did some different things different. And so they, they didn't like it. But Prabhupada mentions it's an offense to consider an, an empowered Vaishnava an object of disciplinary action. You know, so you may want to put some rules, or you, you know, you say you can't do this, and you can't do that. We put some punishments on them. But actually, he's a great devotee, he's doing wonderful preaching. So we should be careful how to deal with such a person. It is offensive to try to give him advice or to correct him. So very important for us uh, how to respect the great devotee, great Acharya. Prabhupada was uh, sometimes hurt by how the God brothers, how they treated him, how they dealt with him. So. Prabhupada became quite critical of them because they were very critical of him. So Prabhupada pointed out their defects. And you can see here, he's mentioning how sometimes they would criticize Prabhupada. But Prabhupada brought great success to Krishna consciousness. He did something which none of them could do, but they didn't appreciate. They they didn't give him the much. They didn't give him credit for that. So, 
this is the problem. Sometimes people are still on the material platform. So, quoting here from the Srimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita describes a Prakrita Bhakta or a materialistic devotee, meaning like Kanista Adhikari, he does not purposely study the Shastra and try to understand the actual standard of pure devotional service. Consequently, he does not show proper respect to advanced devotees. He may, however, follow regulative principles learned from his spiritual master or from his family who worship the deity. He is to be considered on the material platform, although he is trying to advance in devotional service. Such a person is a Bhakta Praya, right? a neophyte devotee, or Bhakta Abbas, a shadow of a devotee, for he is a little enlightened by Vaishnava philosophy. And so, this is, this is some quotations about the person on the neophyte platform, the Kanista Adhikari. He's a little enlightened, he's a devotee, but he's not yet properly understood the philosophy, he has to get more education, he has to get more association, he has to hear more, and this way he can advance. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati describes how they can advance, that after hundreds of lifetimes, of worshipping the deity of Lord Vasudeva with external paraphernalia, one realizes the true nature of his name and mantras, bondage of one's materialistic mentality slackens, right? He becomes less attached to the body. As the Kanista Adhikari gradually comes to perceive the mental activities of a devotee and tries seriously to advance to a higher stage, his materialistic conceptions will go away of their own accord. He then exhibits loving service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, makes friendship with the devotees who are the dearmost sons of the Lord, and by appreciating the universal quality of devotional service to Krishna, he becomes very much eager to engage other innocent people in the service of the Lord. Further, as he begins to make significant advancement, he becomes inimical to anything and anyone that hinders the progress of his devotional life. And thus he avoids atheistic people who cannot benefit by good instruction. So in this way, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada is describing to us how the Kanista devotee gradually becomes a Madhyama devotee. All right? Gradually he gives up his materialistic conception and he's worshipping the deity, so he's getting some purification and he goes on, gradually he starts to make friends with the devotees, he begins to appreciate more the devotees and he will give mercy, try to, tries to engage people in the service of the Lord, you know, Pujari comes, people come to the temple, Pujari is there, he should try to engage them, do some service for the deity. Let them make giwaks, let them offer a lamp to the Lord, get them to do things, do some service. And then he also will, but at the same time he'll be careful to avoid, just avoid the atheistic people who cannot benefit. Don't waste the time by trying to give them instruction, because they will just argue and they'll blaspheme, so it's not good for them. 
So therefore, we have to know who to give mercy to and who not to. That's the Madhyama devotee. One should not remain kanista, one who is situated in the lowest platform, interested only in worshipping the deity in the temple. One therefore has to raise himself from the position of kanista to the Madhyama adhikari. In this verse, Rupa Goswami advises the devotee to be intelligent enough to distinguish between Kanista, Madhyama and Uttama. Devotee should also know his own position, should not try to imitate a devotee situated on a higher platform. Hmm? Giri Swami Maharaj quoted here. Giriraj Maharaj taught this course some many years ago. So he says, there are various ingredients of a neophyte and of an intermediate devotee. A neophyte devotee may have some ingredients of an intermediate devotee, like faith, but he may not have the other ingredients like knowing how to deal with other devotees, innocent people and envious people. So as I mentioned previously, sometimes, you know, devotee may have some qualities which are kanista and some qualities which are madhyam. So Giriraj is mentioning like that, he says a neophyte devotee may have some qualities of the madhyama devotee, he may have faith, but other qualities it may be lacking. So it's, it's like it's like it's not hard and dry that oh this person is kanista, oh this person they're very kanista or they're very madhyam or they're uttama. <laughs> different qualities are there, different ways. Quoting Bhagavad Gita. Those who are free from anger and all material desires who are self-realized, self-disciplined and constantly endeavoring for perfection are assured of liberation in the Supreme in the very near future. So we highlighted this constantly endeavoring for perfection. This is a very important quality for making advancement, right? We, we really want to Endeavor, we have to endeavor continually, constantly to get rid of the, the bad qualities, the, the contamination from the heart, right? We'll hear more about that as we go on, how we have to remove everything. We heard particularly about this kutinati. Remember kutinati? What does it mean? Someone remembers? We describe Kutinati. Shilpa Maharaji. Kutinati means. Shilpa Maharaj, Kutinati means fault finding? Yes, fault finding, right. We spoke about fault finding. People want to find fault with the devotees. And Raghunath Goswami described it's like what? Uh, like bathing in ass urine. Right, like bathing in the urine of the ass. You know, you have to be foolish, you have to be mad to bathe in the urine of the ass. So this is what happens when we're talking, finding fault with the devotees. So we want to be careful for that. We heard about this, try to avoid that. Okay. Um, Self-assessment, we won't do that tonight. Uh, how are we doing? Time? Uh, we have 45 minutes. Good. All right, so we talked about the three categories of devotees. Kanista, Madhyam, Uttama. We discussed different ways to associate appropriately with the three categories of devotees. That was described in the text, the text 5. Mentally honor the devotee who chants the holy name. Offer obeisances to somebody who has undergone spiritual initiation and associate with and faithfully serve 
the devotee who is advanced. Uh, discuss the importance with it, within ISKCON of maintaining an appropriate attitude towards devotees' external features, taken from text number six. Right? The importance within ISKCON particularly, because we're an international society. So we have people from all kinds of backgrounds, all classes, all cultures, all races, all nationalities, all breeds. And Krishna consciousness is open to everyone, provided they follow, they will, provided they behave properly, then everyone can come in. We don't have any barriers, we don't say, no, you cannot come, you're low class, oh, no, you cannot come, you're not qualified. Everyone is welcome, if they follow faithfully, all right? And appropriate ways of seeing and relating to an empowered Vaishnava. Appropriate ways of seeing. How should we see him? Someone can tell me? How do we see an empowered Vaishnava? Huh? Valmiki Prabhu, how do you see an empowered Vaishnava? Valmiki? Yes, Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So we, we cannot be uh, jealous of him, you know, and uh, he, uh, because he, he is empowered, so... Uh, um, <clears throat> so he is not ordinary. He is not ordinary person. Mm -hmm. It is offense actually to to see this empowered uh, Vaishnava as ordinary person. Mm -hmm. So how should we see him? Somebody from another planet? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, as a a servant, pure, pure devotee of Krishna. Yes, right, All right. We say that the representative of Krishna, right? Shakshad Darit Vena Samasta Shastri, right? Krishna's representative, right? Spirit, right? We see him like that. We should give him that kind of respect, right? And how to, how should we relate to him? What should be our business? We have to serve him very nicely. Maharaj. Right, yes, we have to be willing to serve him and we should be willing to hear also and to inquire from him, put relevant questions to him. Remember, yes. what, the, uh, guyam akyati prichati, right? Inquiring confidentially. How yes, does, How does Sanatana Goswami inquire from Lord Chaitanya? How? Uh, he was very submissive and he was asking very humbly. What did he ask? Uh, who am I? Right, yes, right. Who am I? Yeah. Very good, yes. Very nice. And we, can, and yeah. we, cannot, uh, we cannot also give advices to this uh, pure devotee, Uttama Adhikari, because that's not our level. Right. Yes, we shouldn't. Actually, actually uh, can I humbly ask uh, Maharaj uh, in, in this point? Uh huh. Um, <clears throat> so, if you can uh, kindly elaborate a little bit, uh, because when I was assistant of uh, my spiritual master, um, I, I give him a lot of advices in a very, very humble way, you know how to, you know, it, it is not, uh, uh, yeah, so my question is that, and he, ex in, he accepted uh, in, the, in the very nice way that, you know, this, uh, uh, my humble advices was accepted. So if you can explain, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, this point, because in my understanding was that, I, I was not giving him ad advices that I'm some uh, better person 
uh, th than him or something. It was just uh, for uh, for uh, help him, you know, and serve him. So maybe be, me, because of that he accepted this because of, uh, it was pure, you know. Yes. So yes, it's a delicate point. Um, we see in Chaitanya Charitamrita in Chaitanya Lila. We see how uh, Lord Chaitanya did not like, uh, who was it, the, uh, what was the name, that devotee, uh, the one, the, the, he, huh? Jagadananda Pandit, right, Jagadananda Pandit was the, Damodar Pandit, Damodar Pandit, yeah, yeah, uh, one of these pandits, either Damodar Pandit or Jagadananda, uh, you know, they tried to advise Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya did not always like their advice and did not appreciate it. And so, sometimes Prabhupada would ask devotees, what do you think? He would ask, he, uh, Different devotees told me sometimes Prabhupada would call them in and Prabhupada say, What should we do? What do you think? What what can we do? Yes. And and sometimes Prabhupada would also be willing, happy to take advice. For example, one time in Bombay, Mumbai, in the Juhu temple, a Prabhupada was there and one life member came and he had been looking at the back to Godhead. And he said to Prabhupada, he said, you know, Prabhupada, he said, it would be very good if you put some of your Srimad Bhagavatam inside the back to Godhead. And Prabhupada, when he heard this, he thought, yes, he said, this is a very good idea. Immediately he told his secretary, write to Los Angeles and tell the editor that they have to put a section from Srimad Bhagavatam inside the back to Godhead every time. And so, Pra so Prabhupada was willing to hear from other people, you know. And we see also Lord Krishna, uh, when Maharaj Yudhisthira, you know, they, they wanted to do the Rajasuya sacrifice. And so Lord Krishna met with them and they discussed. Sometimes Lord Krishna would ask Uddhava what to do. Uddhava was like the secretary of Lord Chaitanya. So Lord Chaitanya would ask, uh, uh, Uddhava was the secretary of Lord Krishna, and Lord Krishna would often ask Uddhava, what should we do, what can we be done in this situation? So we see Lord Krishna also, but that has to be usually the appropriate person. And, you know, you, ha you have to be a little delicate and <laughs> certainly, as you say, it, you know, it, it can be you know, it may, it may be welcome, it may not be welcome. And Lord Chaitanya certainly didn't welcome sometimes the criticism of some devotee like uh, Damodar Pandit or Jagadananda Pandit. And Jagadananda, he wanted to give Lord Chaitanya, you know, to take a bath, with, to take a oil massage with sandalwood oil, and he wanted Lord Chaitanya to rest on a beautiful blanket and quilt. And Lord Chaitanya didn't like it. He thought, you know, look, I'm a sannyasi. I can't use all these things. This is not for yes. sannyasis. But Damodar Pandit, he got upset and he would fast for, you know, he wouldn't eat. And Lord Chaitanya would have to tell him, go and cook for me and try to get him out of his mood. And then the other person, other devotee, he didn't like Lord Chaitanya spending time and showing affection for the 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 son of a, a young widow there was a young widow woman and and her son used to come and lord chaitanya was quite affectionate to the young boy and so the devotee didn't like lord chaitanya being affectionate with this woman's son and lord chaitanya did not like he thought you know this is not good you know you shouldn't tell me like this anyway uh it's thank you mara it's a difficult thing dealing with senior devotees. We have to know what we can say and who, who can say it and who can't. So Prabhupada had certain people who he would ask, you know, he would confide in, he would ask them, what should we do? All right.
Very good. So we discussed all oh, one more thing. Oh, <laughs> we didn't do this, but uh, okay. Con concluding quote from Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati's commentary: Kanista Adhikari devotees take full shelter of the chanting of Sri Krishna Nam, knowing it to be supremely beneficial, but they don't realize that the position of the Madhyama Adhikari is above their present position and that they should strive to reach that position at some time in the future. Okay? So that's important. We want to realize not to stay simply on the level of Kanista. Okay. What happened to my slide <laughs> presentation? Okay, come back here. Mm. The slides are here. Okay. Is it still sharing the screen? You want to continue sharing the screen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you can get the slides from here. Okay. From here? Yes. No, but no, I've got it down here. It's down here, okay. Yeah. It's this one. But it's, uh, you know, what's happening is it's going behind the zoom. Oh. So, you can... What do I need to do? Yeah, if you escape from here, if you click escape. Where? Where's the escape? Oh, that one. Or, or just double check, just click on share. Share? Yes, then it will go away. Yes. Okay. Mm. It's showing that slide now, guys. It's showing slide, slide now? Yeah, yeah. Mm. How do I open slideshow? All the way on the top. All the way. This thing keeps... Yeah. Okay. Very good, it's okay. Not from start, we want from start. Yeah. Okay, okay so... Another quote from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati's commentary from Srimad Bhagavatam, Purpur, 11th Canto, Kanista Adhikari gradually comes to perceive the mental activities of a devotee and tries seriously to advance to a higher stage. Materialistic conceptions will go away of their own accord. Hmm. We hope. So what does it mean to advance? Certainly we all want to advance, right? We've come here to hear, chant, we want to advance. A devotee is considered superl su superlative or superior according to his attachment and love. Right? Previously we spoke about faith and knowledge. But now, here in Chaitanya Charitamrita, the devotee is considered superior or superlative on the basis of his attachment and love. The process by which a devotee becomes attached to Krishna is described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Anchalila. Diksha kale bhakta kare atma samarpan. Se kale krishna tari kara atma sam. At the time of initiation, a devotee fully surrenders to the Lord's service. Krishna accepts him to be as good as himself. Well, of course, when we get initiated, not every one of us is fully surrendered to Krishna's service. But to some degree we've surrendered, right? And gradually, the initiation is not just simply the ritual. The initiation is the process of taking up the instructions of the spiritual master, regularly hearing and chanting. We are thinking the initiation, just the ritual, the fire yagya, that's not the, the actual initiation. The real initiation is taking the instruction and surrendering to the Guru. 
by diksha, one gradually becomes disinterested in material enjoyment and gradually becomes interested in spiritual life. We can understand how much we are advancing in Krishna consciousness by how much we are disinterested in material enjoyment. That's important. If we are still interested in material enjoyment, we need to concentrate more on our hearing and chanting. And gradually that taste for material enjoyment will dry up. We want spiritual life. We cannot have both. We have to be willing to give up that material enjoyment. So we're talking about initiation, the process of diksha, described here. This diksha is a continuous process whereby a devotee becomes increasingly disinterested in material life and more and more interested in spiritual life. If this doesn't happen, if we go the other way, we become more interested in material life, then we go away from Krishna consciousness. But if we want to advance, we become more interested in spiritual life. And then we, we get through the different stages of devotion. And we may come to, before bhava, surrender is disturbed by anarthas and aparats. Attainment of bhava is a big step in diksha or advancement. You have to come all the way up to Bhav, that's a very advanced level. We have to get through the anartas and we have to give up the offences, the apparats. This is important. So we have to go through these different stages. Diksha is complete when we come to Bhav. At this point, Krishna accepts the devotee on the same level as himself. And the devotee becomes eligible to serve Krishna with his transcendental senses. So we don't have to worry. We have a long way to go before we come to Bhav. <laughs> right? We're still way down on the ladder. We have a long way to go to get up there. Quoting from Rupa Goswami's Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, he described 20 different Angas. There were ten activities, things we should do, and there were ten activities which we should give up. So the first twenty were there, and they're like the door for entering into bhakti. And the first three, which were meant, things which we have to do, we have to take shelter of the feet of a guru, we have to re receive teachings after initiation, and we have to serve the guru with respect. So they're said to be the principal ones, right? Prabhupada describes, we must accept the pure devotee, representative of God, as our guru, and then offer him all the respect one would offer the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is the secret of success. For one who adopts this method, Perfect process is revealed by offering service and surrendering to the spiritual master, one is elevated to devotional service. And by performing devotional service, one gradually becomes attached to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Because of this attachment to the Lord, one can understand the Lord. So, we have to become attached to Krishna. Then you can understand. Now, in the Nectar of Instruction, Srila Prabhupada has written here about the selection of the spiritual master. One should not become a spiritual master unless he has attained the platform of Uttama Adhikari. A neophyte Vaishnava or a Vaishnava situated on the intermediate platform can also accept disciples, but such disciples must be on the same platform. 
and it should be understood, they cannot advance very well towards the ultimate goal of life under his insufficient guidance. Therefore, a disciple should be careful to accept Uttama Adhikari as a spiritual master. So, how do we understand this within ISKCON? Do we consider that every, every spiritual master who is giving initiation, that they have to be Uttama Adhikari? How do you understand this, how does this relate to the devotees in ISKCON? Shilpa Shama Devi Yes, Shilpa Shama Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna Maharaj, um, in ISKCON all the spiritual masters, they accept the disciples on behalf of Śrīla Prabhupāda. Okay. And so, Śrīla Prabhupāda is an Uttama Adhikāri. Yes, we accept Śrīla Prabhupāda as the Uttama Adhikāri. He is the founder Acharya, right? Yes. So, when we give initiation, one of the purposes of initiation is to connect the devotee to the parampara, to the parampara, to Srila Prabhupada in the line of disciplic succession. Right? Yes. So it's important that the spiritual master is representing Srila Prabhupada, that he's a strict follower of Srila Prabhupada, and he's bringing people to take shelter of Śrīla Prabhupāda. And in what way do we promote Śrīla Prabhupāda in ISKCON? Uh, we study his books. Yes, we study his books. And we offer Guru Puja. Every day in the temples they will offer Guru Puja to Śrīla Prabhupāda. All the devotees should take part in Prabhupāda's Guru Puja. Yes. Very good. Okay, any other points? Anybody else like to say? Swarup Krishna Prabhu. Swarup Krishna Prabhu. Dandavat Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, regarding the second point, we also uh, regularly uh, say the pranam mantra of uh, Srila Prabhupada. Yes. And, uh, so that is also very important to, um, uh, uh, while uh, saying the Pranam Mantra of Spiritual Master, to also, also pro pronounce the Pranam Mantra of, Sri, of Srila Prabhupada. Right. And uh, uh, I was also actually trying to say that Spiritual Master represents uh, the Parampara, and uh, um, obviously Parampara in uh, Srila Prabhupada is part of the parampara. Yes. This is a very, very glorious parampara that we have, um, which we have come to know from the first lecture that uh, of yours. Yes. And uh, um, uh, um, another point is, I mean, a spiritual master who, who um, accepts disciples, they are also like... Um, ordained by the GBC. GBC is one body that Tula Prabhupada himself has framed. What, what is this now about the GBC? Tula Prabhupada himself has created GBC and GBC um, spells out who would be a spiritual master under the, under the banner of this uh, society. All right, but approval from the GBC does not mean that that person has to be spiritually qualified. The GBC also point that out, that they're not responsible. If, if <laughs> you know, if the guru does have a problem, it's, you can't say, well, it's the GBC, they should not have approved him. The GBC say it's up to every individual 
to be convinced themselves. They have to use their own intelligence to dis decide for themselves. The GBC, certainly they sanction certain people, but we cannot blame the GBC if something goes wrong. Right, Maharaj. Okay. This is a point. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. It's still up to the individual to be responsible. Any other points on this? Yes, Maharaj. There is Gita Induleka Maharaj. Gita Induleka Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhamma Pram. Maharaj, in the, uh, to promote Prashila Prabhupada in the altar, in the temple, and in the Rathyadras, you have all, always have a like, deity form of uh, Srila Prabhupada. Uh, and uh, also in uh, the Kirtans, we, the, in the temples, the Kirtans starts with uh, either the Radha Madhav or uh, with Srila Prabhupada Pram Pranamad. Well, these are not rules. And, these are not rules. I don't know about these things, you know, you say Prabhupada's deity, it's, it may be there, but it's not a rule, it's not mandatory, it's not, it doesn't have to be like that. You know, it's up to the temple, if they want to put Prabhupada's deity there, they can, if they just want to keep photos there, they can, many temples also, they still just have photos, they don't put Prabhupada's deity. Okay. And, uh, Kirtan, it, it's not mandatory again also. It's up to the individual who's leading the Kirtan. Generally it's sung. But I know some senior devotees, they think it shouldn't be. They think we should just sing. Prabhupada never sang pranam mantras to his guru. Prabhupada allowed us to do it for him. But it's not mandatory. It's not that you have to do it. Okay, anything else? And Maharaj in the Mangla Arti also, Sansar Dhamma, that's also in the morning, also two times like uh, one, and then Guru Puja, two times we offer. Well, Samsara Dhamma, Mangal Arti, yeah, we're worshipping the Guru. Yes, ma'am. We're worshipping all the Gurus, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's the process. We first worship the Guru and then we sing Hare Krishna. Before you worship Krishna, first we should worship the Guru. So that's the process. First you worship Guru and then you worship Krishna. So we worship the Guru, we sing this Guru Vastikam and then we chant Hare Krishna Mantra. And Maharaj, one more thing, on all the like uh, pamphlets, uh, we have a picture of Prabhupada and or on the temples also there is written Srila Prabhupada like on the gate or somewhere like this. On the leaflets also, like we have a picture of Prabhupada, not of other somebody else. Yes, well, I don't know about leaflets, but certainly the property, ISKCON property, that Prabhupada is the founder Acharya. Nobody can claim the property for themselves. Yeah. It's the property of the society, and Prabhupada is the founder, uh, founder Acharya, right? There are many other Acharyas, but Prabhupada is the founder Acharya. Right. Just like in Sri Vaishnavism, you know, Ramanuja is the founder Acharya. And so everybody initiated in Sri Sampradaya, you know, they're all, they're connected very strongly to Ram, Sri Ramanuja Acharya. And so similarly, we're in our Gaudiya Sampradaya, where our connection is to Srila Prabhupada. And it will be like that for many generations, you know. As long as the movement goes on, the connection will be to Prabhupada, like that. Prabhupada is the founder Acharya. Mm -hmm. Any other points? Yes, Have we got time? Yes, Thank you, Maharaj. There is Advaita Chandra Prabhu. Advaita Chandra Prabhu? Maharaj. Uh, promote Sila Prabhupada uh, yang saya ingat ketika kita well, I remember before we taking initiation we have to follow ISKCON disciple course program that there is taught Sila Prabhupada is the main Shikshad guru of us for us so for those who interested to follow this Krishna consciousness so before they taking initiation 
they have to consider Srila Prabhupada as the main Siksha Guru. And before starting Japa, our rounds, they have to chant Srila Prabhupada Pranam before, before they uh, have chosen their own spiritual master. So it's a mandatory to chant Srila Prabhupada Pranam Mantra before they start chanting. And also when they do obeisances. Yes. When we do obeisances, we chant. They have to say chant Shla Prabhupada Pranama Mantra before they got their yes. guru. Okay. Yes, very good. Yes, everything he said is right. We have to do the disciple course and we learn Prabhupada as a Shiksha Guru for the, all the devotees. And new people coming into Krishna consciousness, new people coming into Krishna consciousness. What should they do first of all? When new people come into the movement, first thing they should do is take shelter of Srila Prabhupada. We bring, the, they come to the temple, they're looking for a guru. They say, oh, you came to the right place. We bring them to meet Srila Prabhupada and they can take shelter of Srila Prabhupada. So first of all, they take shelter of Srila Prabhupada and then after, ta you know, taking shelter of Srila Prabhupada, they chant Prabhupada's Pranam Mantra and everything, G gradually they will meet also someone who can give them initiation. And by the initiation, then they're formally connected to Srila Prabhupada. All right, any more questions? More comments? Yes, ma'am. Radha Kishori Maharaj. Radha Kishori Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, his books, Prabhupada's books, are the basis of the entire movement. So, entire philosophy, all the lectures, everything is based on his purports, his books. Yes, definitely. Right? We don't want to change that. Every morning, Srimad Bhagavatam or Chaitanya Charitamrita, and then we have Bhagavad Gita. These books, these are, this is the basis of our Krishna conscious philosophy. We don't want to change that. We don't want to introduce anything else. Somebody may like to read other books, it's up to them. But these books, this is the, the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave great importance to hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay. Ananta Pandit Prabhu? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, Maharaj, uh, from what I have learned, that the standard is like principles, the regulative principles, it cannot be changed because it is standard by our Acharyas, by our Srila Prabhupada. So Srila Prabhupada made the uh, standard for this movement. Four regulative principles, 16 rounds of chanting. So this is the basic standard done, established by Srila Prabhupada and also deity worship uh, standards. So it is uh, based on Srila Prabhupada or established by Srila Prabhupada. Yes. The Acharya. Yes, right. Everything is set up by Srila Prabhupada, the standards, the temple program, it's all came from Srila Prabhupada. So he's the Shiksha Guru for everyone. He's our ultimate shelter. Dan semua guru, semua guru adalah under dari Srila Prabhupada, di bawah Prabhupada. And all the gurus uh, were under Srila Prabhupada. Yes, definitely. Any other point? Yes, Shilpa Maharaji. Oh, sorry, Guru Maharaj, I forgot to put my hand down. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Who? Sadananda Ramchandra Prabhu. Oh, Arik Shamaraj. Arik Shamaraj. So, Maharaj, are we still on the same topic of 
accepting uttam adhikar bhi as on the screen or yes has okay so one of the other thing i also i think uh, as is mentioned by prabhupada in this uh, excerpt that he has posted is that uh, if sometimes the uttam adhikari is so advanced that uh, like since he is so detached from the world uh, if a neophyte who needs more care and attention takes up an uttam adhikari as a guru then he may not get that attention that he needs so that's why prabhupad also probably is mentioning that it's a uh, madhyam adhikari can give more care and you know ho- hand holding towards a kanishtha adhikari devotee and bring him to that madhyam adhikari stage or whatever it is to progress from is that correct in my uh, um... well the uttama adhikari remember uttama adhikari can also come down to the madhyam adhikari platform It's not that because he's Uttama Adhikari that he just simply doesn't preach. Uh, People have different, different ideas about what it means to be an Uttama Adhikari. How do you, how do you understand? How would you understand Uttama Adhikari? No, uh, so, with Uttama Adhikari, uh, so my understanding of an Uttama Adhikari is that he is extremely advanced. And uh, in the sense that he looks at all souls equally because uh, Pandita Samadarshana, I think that principle comes in. So therefore he is able to see the Paramatma in every living entity and you know. Uh, and I'm, I'm not trying to say that he doesn't preach or anything. But when it comes to say, uh, in terms of uh, a personal care, because you know he is always absorbed in Krishna, you know, giving that personal attention to a Kanishtha Adhikari devotee who usually needs it to progress because sometimes a Kanishtha Adhikari devotee may get deviated easily or distracted easily. And uh, an Uttam Adhikari is usually in his own, uh, in the sense, uh, he's in a platform where he's only uh, absorbed in Krishna. And therefore, and a Kanishtha Adhikari is less absorbed in Krishna and more absorbed in material uh, surroundings, right? So, there could be a clash in the sense that uh, a Kanishtha Adhikari may not be able to get the relatability with the Uttam Adhikari as opposed to a Madhya Madhya. <laughs> that, that makes sense. I'm not sure. I'm just trying to use logic here. Well, the, the point is if the Kanishtha, well, naturally Kanishtha is going to be more materially absorbed. But that's because he's not so advanced, because he's not heard properly the Krishna conscious philosophy. But if he comes to the Madhyam platform, then certainly he will, he, you know, he will, how, to, how does the Kanisa come to the Madhyam platform? He has to hear regularly, he has to understand more the mood of the devotees and associate favorably, develop that friendship with the devotees. So the Madhyama devotee, as you say, you know, yeah, 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 it's certainly a little different from the Uttama, but the Uttama Adhikari and the Madhyam devotee, they're both very advanced spiritually. I mean, the, the Madhyama devotee is a preacher, he's engaged in distributing Krishna consciousness. And Prabhupada also described in the purport, he mentioned that the Uttama Adhikari is one who is always thinking about how to distribute Krishna consciousness, how to spread Krishna consciousness to others, how to give the holy name. He's thinking about ways and means to introduce the holy name to people. So like that, he's always thinking of Krishna in one way or another. Yes, Maharaj. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, I appreciate your point. It's an interesting point that somebody who is more, who is a Madhyam devotee, he would probably, it may be easier to relate to for the person who's looking for a guru. You know, somebody who's... But, a, yes? Sorry. Uh, so, just along the same lines, so I've spoken to uh, sannyasis in our movement, uh, or even senior devotees in our movement, so I'll just wrap this up quickly, sorry, I think we're over time as well. So, uh, so, in some cases, say for example, I'm a much younger devotee, so if I have, say, a, a material problem, but I want to slowly progress towards, you know, uh, uh, spirituality, even though spirituality is a focus, but currently I'm absorbed with, say, a material particular problem. So, uh, like, I personally feel that going to, say, a 
sannyasi or someone who is absorbed in Krishna all the time is a waste of that person's time. And, you know, since they won't always want to preach in Krishna consciousness, even though they don't mind giving advice sometimes on that particular platform. But I've observed in some cases, some devotees are able to uh, give instructions according to my current situation and some uh, devotees just give the instruction exactly how is it, how it is in Shastra but that may not be applicable to me at that current moment though, if that makes sense. Yes, uh, I can, yeah, I appreciate what you're saying. It certainly could be like that with some people, but it's not always a rule. Yes, Maharaj. But certainly that, that you, you know, it may appear like that, but there's some people that you go to them, you know, and they, oh, he's a sannyasi, he's, you know, he's uh, not really in this world, he can't appreciate, <laughs> uh, you know, my situation. <laughs> no, no, I mean, like, I, I have spoken, even though, like, I, I feel, because I feel that uh, the only shelter I have is in this moment. So, so uh, as I was saying, so with some sannyasis who have gone and spoken to, I've gotten a particular advice and with others I've gotten another type of response. So, right. Which is what I was just trying to say. Maybe they are on a different platform when it comes to relating to a person. No, well, it might just be different personalities, you know, that they have different ways of dealing with people. And you had a, a different relationship. Maybe somebody knew you better, somebody didn't know you. Or their particular, it could be also influenced by their particular mood at that particular time. You know, maybe something else is bothering them on their mind. <laughs> Difficult to know. But, uh, yes, uh, but the idea, the principle is there, you know, that generally should be careful to try to find out the, the advanced devotee. You know, Uttama Adhikari, as we said, he's always thinking of Krishna, he's thinking to spread Krishna consciousness. So like that. Uttama Adhikari doesn't mean that he's not of this world, you know, but he's, he's very much in the world and he's thinking about how to use it for Krishna. That's the, the idea. And so we say, you know, whoever you happen to get, connect to in Krishna consciousness, you know, the idea is to bring you, all of us to Prabhupada, and Prabhupada would bring us to his guru, and his guru would take us all like that to the parampara, and we get connected to the great acharyas, and in this way we can go back to Godhead. And the shiksha guru can also deliver the devotees, not that the job of delivering the disciple is only to the diksha guru. Although sometimes we do tend to give more importance on the Diksha Guru, but we see that the Shiksha is actually more important. And that point is made very strongly in the disciple course. But there is that culture, that tendency within ISKCON that we give more importance to the Diksha Guru. But it's actually Shiksha which is really important. All right, we have to, we have to stop you. now. Huh? Yeah. Okay, so we, we will stop here tonight. Uh, and if there's any more questions, if anybody has any questions, you put them on the chat and we can take them up in the next meeting. We'll meet tomorrow night. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Jai. Gorbhakta Vrinda ki jai. Jai.